All right, so now let's move on to task three where we'll create a dashboard. And basically the idea here is going to be we're gonna combine the map, tree map, and timeline views all together and have them interact with one another. So for task three, step one, let's create a dashboard. So to do that, we're going to select new dashboard and I'm gonna rename my dashboard to daily vaccination. Or daily vaccination dashboard. And it's pretty easy to put elements into the dashboard. You basically just drag your, your sheets that we created in the previous steps onto the dashboard. And you can see how you move your mouse around. Tableau tries to help you with where you want to put it. So in the tutorial instructions, I recommended a layout, something like this. And note how you can grab onto the different interface elements and move them around. Also notice over here, you have two legends. You don't need both of these legends. Um, we're just gonna keep the geographic map legend that, um, as you remember, we created five step colors. So to remove that legend here, we'll just remove it from the dashboard. And then I'll take the map legend and kind of put it up at the top there. So again, this is just a suggested layout. You can, you can create whatever layout you like but this is what I'm gonna use for the remainder of this tutorial. So now let's create filters in these views and hopefully that'll make all these different interfaces make more sense once they have filters applied. Now filters are very easy to, to implement in these interfaces, so let's do the timeline first. And if I click here, I clicked on that view and then you see like sort of a, um, a filter icon. I'll click on that, use this filter, and then I'll go up to tree map and I'll also make that a filter. Okay, so let's move on now to task three, step two, where you'll observe the dashboard interactions. Now, if everything was set up correctly, let's first show you about the timeline. With the filter, as I move my mouse over the timeline and I find a date that might interest me, if you click down on the timeline, so in this case I selected August 11th, when I move my mouse over the other interfaces, you can now see the tooltips are showing the specific date instead of a star because I filtered the views. So in this case, China, India, if I come over to the geographic map, And sometimes the map can be a little finicky. You have to select from here to pan it, F. You can see here, and I can use my mouse wheel to zoom in a little bit, that I've got the same color for China. And notice too now how the date is showing the specific date that was clicked on the timeline, August 11th, as opposed to a star. And we're seeing the number of records the number of, sorry, the number of people that were vaccinated, about 5.8 million people according to this data. And it's the same value over here, about 5.8. So I've got a geographic representation, a tree map representation, and so forth. Now, conversely, if I were to click on one of the countries in the tree map, if I click on China, you can see how the geographic map filters itself out to only show that particular country. And even more interestingly, you can kind of see here in the timeline how we're now only seeing the daily vaccination records for China over time. Because notice how the location is now filled in instead of a star. And so that's the basic idea of this interaction, right? And now as a tip, if you want to clear these filters, what I found is the easiest way is if I go kind of where the header is and I just right click, it filters it there and it filters it there, and you're back to the sort of unfiltered view of things, but you can use these interfaces to start exploring. 
All right, so let's move on now to task four, where we're going to create a story. And the idea with a story is basically how you, how do you communicate what you found through the analysis? You know, the idea of a story is a good metaphor for visual analytics because often the people that have to use the outcomes of the visual analytics process are decision makers. They need quick, simple graphics that are easy to understand and you need to tell them a story about what you found as opposed to just throwing lots of data at them or graphics that they don't understand. So really this is where it's up to you as the analyst to decide what is the story you want to tell. So with that, for task four, step one, let's identify some story elements. And with that, we'll look for some interesting patterns. And as you saw previously in the video, I saw this kind of peak of vaccinations happening in the summer of 2021. And so I'll select a date like August 9th, which might be slightly different than the instructions, but August 9th, August 10th, it doesn't really matter. There wasn't much change in that time. But as you saw previously, we have an interesting pattern. China, India, Japan, and other countries in Asia are seeing a really high increase in vaccinations. So perhaps that's the story that we want to tell, that this part of the world saw a significant increase in vaccinations as opposed to earlier in the pandemic when places like the United States, United Kingdom, and so forth. So if I go back, I'll select that date around August 10th. I'll use August 9th. So to create a story about these patterns I saw, I'm going to go now and create a new story. And much like a dashboard, you add elements from your dashboard views or, or what have you to your story to communicate what it is you want to tell people. So in this case, I'm going to drag the map. And by the way, using the dashboard, all of those sheets that you work with have already been set to those values with filters and so forth. So what you can do here then is add a caption. So I'll call mine vaccination 10 August in the date. That's kind of the header. Now, another cool thing you can do if you can drag text onto it, you might want to use this to point out specific things. And so in this case, some descriptive text might be and again, you have all variety of formatting and text and however you want to uh, graphically display things, but you can move that around and put that onto your story. And again, if you were communicating this to someone like in a presentation at a meeting or something. Um, all of these little things can be important for um, communicating your story about what you're seeing here. So the legend comes in by default. Now, we'll just make a very simple story for demonstration purposes. But if this is part one of your story, you could then create a blank story point. And another part of our story might be a comparison. A comparison between countries. So in this case, I'll drag the tree map in. And again, I might add some descriptive text to help kind of and so forth. Again, this can be anything you want it to be. But again, what are the insights that you found through interacting with this data? And then how does that translate into a story that you might want to communicate to a decision maker, somebody in your company, and so forth. And that's why visual analytics has become so powerful, is what are the insights that you can derive, and ultimately, how do you communicate those insights to people that need to know about them? 
And by the way, if you click this button here, the presentation mode, you can then see your story kind of like a PowerPoint presentation where you have your captions and you can cycle through as many story points as you created. It's still interactive and so forth. So hopefully you've seen how Tableau is a really powerful tool for doing visual analytics from taking data, transforming it, creating visual interfaces, dashboards, stories, and so forth. Now, if you're doing this tutorial as perhaps as part of a classroom assignment, and you have to um, show the results of what you've learned to create um, deliverables such as images, it's really easy. If you go back to say your dashboard, select your dashboard and select dashboard, export image, and it'll send it out as a PNG file or some other files like that. And if we go back to where I exported it from, you get this nice graphic and this in itself could be very helpful. If you don't want to use a story, you could use the graphic in a report or whatever communication format you want to uh, use. And similar with um, story images, story export image. Now, from what I've learned, this will be for the individual story points that they um, come out individually. But again, all that effort you made could be used for some kind of bigger graphic. So with that, this concludes this software tutorial about an introduction to visual analytics with Tableau software. I hope you've seen how visual analytics is a fascinating and engaging paradigm for how you can interact with different forms of data using interactive visual interfaces. Hi, this is Brian Tomaszewski. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and share this video. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel and clicking the notification icon to stay up to date on new videos from this channel. Thanks for watching.